हम लोग कुछ क्षणों के लिए शांति करेंगे जरा सा मेडिटेशन एक मिनट का and sisters uh, we are privileged that today brother nc krishna is with us <clears throat> you are all welcome aur aaj ka topic bahut acha krishna ji ne rakha hai jo ki bahut hi practical hai what is the purpose of life what is sadhana कृष्णा जी के बारे में मैं बताना चाहूंगा कि कृष्णा जी जो कि राष्ट्रीय प्रवक्ता हैं हमारे नेशनल लेक्चरार हैं ये 16 वर्ष की अवस्था से ही थियोसॉफिकल सोसाइटी के माध्यम से सेवारत हैं हालांकि ये अडियार में ही पले बढ़े इनके नाना जी को हम लोग शायद जानते हों एम कृष्णामा चारिल्लु जी हैं और ये पचपन वर्ष से इसी में लगे हुए हैं और जैसा कि इन्होंने सब्जेक्ट लिया है बहुत ही प्रैक्टिकल और ये वर्तमान में हैदराबाद में रहते हैं और हमारे कृष्णा जी जो हैं थियोसफी के बहुत सीरियस स्टूडेंट हैं और लेक्चरार या टीचर भी हैं जैसा हम लोग जानते हैं तो ये हम लोगों के साथ व्यावहारिक जीवन को कैसे जिया जा सकता है अध्ययन के माध्यम से इसके बारे में अपने थॉट्स शेयर करेंगे अब हम ज्यादा समय लिए बगैर कृष्णा जी को आमंत्रित करेंगे कि आए और बताएं अपने ये जो टॉपिक लिया है इन्होंने बहुत आसान करके व्हाट इज पर्पस ऑफ लाइफ एंड व्हाट इज साधना ब्रदर कृष्णा जी प्लीज कम एंड शेयर योर थॉट्स विद अस थैंक यू धन्यवाद डियर ब्रदर्स hearty greetings to all of you new delhi must be quite cold maybe the other parts of north india also must be quite cold because it's winter and uh, sometime back during my service i lived at chandigarh so i know what it is winter how cold and severe it is north india even hyderabad is chill but it's not very cold so let's hope the topic which we have chosen which we are going to discuss that would warm us up and our hearts will be filled with warmth at the end of the the end of the time which is assigned for this talk as said we are going to try to find out what is the real purpose of our life kya maqsad hai hamara zindagi ka what is the real purpose of our life and what is sadhana what is sadhana kis cheez ko hum kehte hain sadhana so this is what we are trying to find out let's discuss it together or even listening is part of discussion so we will we'll together do this exercise sadhana means to exert 
to do something which is not ordinary, something extraordinary. That's sadhana. So we have to do sadhana. What is that we have to bring into our lives? We have to bring into our lives a certain amount of discipline. And we should also attempt a paradigm shift. Thus far, I've been thinking about myself, all about myself, my progress, my achievements. That there's going to be a shift from me, I'm going to shift to us or we. So that's the shift. I think about more about others, less about me. That's the major change which will take place in the journey, in trying to find out the purpose of journey. So that's the paradigm shift which I'm talking about. So we have to walk on this spiritual path and this process might help us to lead a life which is full of <coughs> contentment and satisfaction. This path which we choose now, thinking less about myself and thinking in terms of the welfare of others more, should give me more satisfaction, more contentment, and that would that would uh, help us to lead the right kind of life. So let's find out what sort of re-engineering we have to do to lead a happy, contented life. So we often hear a lot of places this particular term. We hear this phrase, especially when we attend a spiritual discourse or we are part of a convention and things like that. We are asked to find out the real purpose of life. We are asked to find out the real purpose of life. We also hear the word sadhana. Both we come across the phrase of the real purpose of life and sadhana. And we are asked to find out what are the efforts we have to find out or the efforts we have to put in the right direction to achieve the purpose of life. This is something which we very often hear. So normally, when the going is good, when the life is going on without any interruptions, we are busy leading a routine kind of life, a busy life. We don't have time or inclination to think about such topics like the real purpose of life. We don't have that sort of time because we are busy trying to achieve what we are supposed to achieve in this life. Because we think achieving the material progress is the real purpose of life. This is the <coughs> vision of many people. So in our worldly life, most of us would have achieved progress that is planned by us or expected of us by our elders. There could be a slip here and slip there, but all the all the time, all the persons, even an average person, is trying to achieve the purpose of his life, which is perhaps measurable in quantity, in terms, like the amount of money I have made, the amount of assets which I have got, and maybe the amount of possessions like car or scooter or things like that which I have, and the comforts which I have. All these are measurable terms. We always think in terms of these measurable terms, what we have achieved in our life. This is something which normally happens. And I would say here, making money is not a sin. Making money is not a sin. But when we get attached to money, there is a problem. So making money by itself is not a sin. But when we get attached to that money, that's a problem. So this is something which we all have to find out if we are wanting to tread the other path, the real path. While earning money or worldly riches, while chasing these material goals, we are drawn, we are sucked into a rat race. There is competition, there is strife, there is picking up enmity. We don't agree with somebody. All these things happen. They all develop in us. And also we have the qualities which we should not have if we want life of contentment. Maybe the qualities like jealousy, greed, 
rivalry or this will be part of us when we are in competition when we are in the race and we don't care much to examine whether we are employing the right means to earn the right objectives see the employment of right means is very important to achieve our goals but somehow we have to achieve goals we can do anything and everything so we don't concentrate on employing the right means that's what i mean so we don't employ right means to achieve right goals and we all experience happiness we all experience happiness there is happiness which is perhaps temporary which is perhaps temporary when i achieve this there is happiness and after some time i don't no longer like that particular object which i have and so i want something else so the craving begins so when i achieve that i am happy so this happiness is temporary so when i achieve there is happiness when i don't achieve there is disappointment mm -hmm. this is what we find in our lives and a feeling of being hurt sometimes when i haven't achieved even though i have tried my best so this is something which happens to all people we don't analyze success success also has to be analyzed if we have to repeat success but we don't analyze success but we always think about our failures we definitely analyze our failures because we want to insulate against failures even that is good because to insulate against failures means we are moving towards success so we definitely analyze failures in spite of putting efforts when we have not succeeded in hitting the bull's eye we drop back into the chair and want to examine ourselves why what happened what went wrong and in this exasperated way of thinking we say what is life what is the purpose of life is there anything beyond this what is that we have to strive for that's where the question arises in us as to what's the real purpose of life so for a successful person <coughs> who has achieved everything he also thinks what is there we have got everything that the world is wanting us to possess i have got everything but i am not satisfied is there anything beyond this is there anything beyond this is what a very successful man would always think in terms so he has got extra money he starts spending that money in trying to help others that's how he finds satisfaction so he also finds ways and means to get at that permanent happiness or satisfaction in he would think when he is bored doing the same thing and again and again earning more money what is the purpose of this life is there anything beyond this material life making money beyond that is there anything which i can do so sometimes when you read an inspirational book for example the 5 am club of robin sharma say for example we feel very charged we feel that we should achieve so at that point of time we think yes we should not be concentrating in what is tangible we should not concentrate on something which is tangible which we can hold in our hands but we should try something which is intangible which is something which is permanent but it is intangible it's not something which i can hold in my hand i should try for that i should try to possess that that's what i think when i read an inspirational book or hear an inspirational address so when we see the emptiness in ordinary life when we see the emptiness in ordinary life when i see that this life is not giving me the enough units of satisfaction then <coughs> no longer i would think in terms of repeating the same way of living i would like to find out the real purpose of life and try to make a new beginning to find out what is the what is the new path i should tread the earlier path which i knew was giving me all the material satisfaction all the technological improvements whatever new thing has come into the market i have got it so that is all there but that is not giving me satisfaction so what is that i am trying to do i am trying to do something achieve something which is intangible and what is that path i can take which can give me that sort of permanent satisfaction is what i'm trying and that would give me contentment is what i understand so i keep searching for sources and people 
who would guide me to get at that. I would search for sources and people who would help me to find out that path which will give me complete satisfaction and contentment. Thus far, thus far, we have been treading the path that is going out, reaching out to achieve goals. You use our capability of our mind, we also use our faculties which we have, and we try to go out and reach all the things which we need to have to make our life more enriching. That's a mark of going out, reaching out. This is what we're trying to do while reaching the material goals. And what is sought now in this new path? What is sought, what is that we are trying to achieve in this new path is, that will give joy, that will give contentment is, what is that I should do? That will involve in my traveling inside me. I no longer require to go outside me to achieve whatever I need to achieve. But I need to travel inside me. This is called the Nivrutti Marga. The Pravrutti Marga and the Nivrutti Marga. So I go inside me and try to find out. I find to, I, I want to have a retreat within. There are retreats which I have when I go for a form house and things like that. I don't have a form house. I'm just saying for the sake of example. So this retreat is going back into my real self, my real soul and trying to find out what is so good about that place so this retreat inside is what i'm trying to achieve each man has to lay a path which is his own why because a lot of people will say follow this path you will get it but that is his path if i have to have that path as mine i may not succeed like for example i wear a shoe which is number seven and somebody else is wearing number nine the number nine size man says wear this and walk I will not be able to walk. So the path which I have to choose is something which I have to lay myself and I'll have to decide how will I go within me and try to find out what is the best way <coughs> to achieve. So we all know the life wave. We all know, talking about a bit of theosophy now, we all know that life wave, the prana shakti, has moved from mineral to vegetable, from vegetable to animal and from animal to man. Till the time that life force was in the mineral, plant and animal kingdom, it had a group consciousness. It was called a group soul. And somewhere in the process of evolution, the individualization has taken place. So with the individualization, we have the advent of man or the arrival of man. So individualization of the consciousness brought in the presence of man with individual consciousness. He has a soul, so individual soul. A man is called a human being. Why is he called human being? He is supposed to be humane. He is supposed to be very, very kind. He is humane. Because he is humane, he is called a human being. So this is what man is all about. But are we humane? This is something which we have to understand. If you have to go inside, this is one question which you have to ask ourselves. Am I humane? Am I compassionate? Am I loving? Is something which I have to question each time. For each of the living forms, we have talked about the mineral, we have talked about the plant, we have talked about the animal, we have talked about the man. For each of these units of living forms, there exists matter and spirit. Padartha, Chaitanya. There are two things which exist. So, is the case with man. Both matter and spirit are there in him also. Two aspects of man. In fact, man has two other main divisions which we talk about in theosophy. There is a unit of three which is called Atma, Buddhi, Manas which we call ego. And there is a unit of four which we call the personality which is comprising of the physical body, the etheric double, the astral body and the lower mental body. So we have these two divisions, main divisions. And we are also made of spirit and matter. We are also made of spirit and matter. We have these two main components, which are called the top one is called the upper triad. The lower one is called the lower quaternary. So this is what we are, man is made of. Briefly to talk about the constitution of man. See, man 
when he started his journey from above, he knew the purpose of life. Man, when he started his journey from above, he knew the purpose of life. But when he came, descended onto the earth, and he got sucked into matter or he fell into matter, he lost all that knowledge. So to begin with, when he started his journey, man knew the purpose of life. But because he descended to the earth, he became more and more involved with matter. Then he lost all his life, all his knowledge about the purpose of life. So this perishable part consisting of four bodies is called the personality. The immortal part of man is called the ego. This is as for the theosophical literature. So how exactly we use this lower personality to move towards the higher personality, at least to the level of higher manas, is what we have to do. What is the route we have to take? So this is something which you have to do. Ego consists of Atma Buddhi Manas, soul in English, Atma Buddhi Manas, and the personality of man is made of, as I said earlier, the physical, the etheric double, the astral, and the lower mental. So this is the constitution of man. The soul, which is the witness to all that goes on in man's life, is called the undivided spark of the divine. The soul, which keeps on looking at everything that's happening, whether it is good or bad, whether man is wanting to do something which is beneficial to everybody or beneficial <coughs> to himself. It keeps on watching. It doesn't interfere. It's just a witness. So this soul, which is a witness to all that goes on in man's life, is called the undivided spark of the divine. This spark is a unit of the universal consciousness. This spark is a unit of the universal consciousness. So we have come out of that consciousness and we have to get back to the consciousness. That is the whole journey. That is the purpose of our real life. This is what we need to do. So we have to take hold of our vestures, our bodies, cleanse them, see that we move higher towards the source from where we have emerged. This is the whole purpose of life. So how normally the journey can be something which happens for a period of time because the soul has to we are told has to undertake an obligatory journey an obligatory journey why do they say an obligatory journey there is no option for it you are in the train for example you have bought a ticket up to say new delhi you keep going so that's the goal reaching new delhi is the goal you have a ticket to go to the goal similarly the soul has come out the goal is perfection it is going on moving so the obligatory journey is on it's not optional it is obligatory it is not optional please note this is what is said in the secret doctrine by madame blavatsky this obligatory journey the obligatory journey of the soul is to arrive at perfection when we are perfect will become part of the universal consciousness. So as we have come down, we have picked up a lot of impurities. All these impurities have to go and we have to become pure and that is reaching perfection. So this obligatory journey of the soul is to arrive at the perfection. In that process, in that process, this unit, this Atma Buddhi Manas takes many births. In search of perfection, in search of Paripurnata, this Atma Buddhi Manas takes many births, gains experience and moves towards the goal of perfection. Normally, it may take, say, 100 lives. But if you do sadhana, maybe we can do it quicker. This is the role of sadhana. The law of karma also plays its part in determining the type of lives the ego has to undertake. So the journey continues. The journey continues till soul reaches perfection. The obligatory journey continues till the soul reaches perfection. So reaching perfection is the real purpose of our life. So it is not any way living, but living the perfect way. At the end, the individual consciousness merges into the universal consciousness. 
at the end of the journey, the individual consciousness merges into the universal consciousness. So, how to quicken this journey and how to reduce the number of births? What sort of efforts I have to put? This is what the sadhaka has to decide and achieve this goal of perfection. To evolve faster, one has to make a journey inwardly, surely, with a lot of observation. We have to go into ourselves, find out what we need to do, drop what we need to do, acquire what we need to do. All this we have to take by taking a trip inside us, not outside us. To achieve perfection is our purpose of life and this is our real goal of life. This is our real goal of life. This is the purpose of our life. We have to acquire, we have to acquire in the process, soul wisdom, soul wisdom. Soul is Atma, wisdom is Vidya. So Atma Vidya is what we are supposed to possess. Atma Vidya is what we are supposed to possess. We should not get satisfied with mere intellectual head learning. So for this life, I'm a channel accountant. It's not going to help me for lives to come. In this life, I'm a channel accountant. It may not help in the next life. So what it means is intellectual learning, head learning is of no use. We have to learn the soul wisdom. We have to acquire soul wisdom, Atma Vidya. So this is what we should strive for. The soul or Atma is not visible. We all know this. The soul or Atma is not visible. But it is, so to say, in a sacred place, in a cave-like place in our own heart. Atma is invisible. It's made of a very smooth matter very fine matter, we will not be able to see it, we will not be able to feel it, but it is there in us. So this is something which we have to remember. To have a look at Atma, to have a glimpse at Atma, Atma Darshana, as we call it, to have a look at Atma, we have to develop that insight. That insight comes through meditation. This is part of sadhana. Our scriptures talk about sadhana. We have to reach the reach the goal by following the steps which are mentioned in the scriptures and in our literature and various other sources to achieve our goal the mind the manas which we have that should become our instrument to achieve the goal we have the mind which has to become our instrument normally the mind controls us mind manages us but we have to reach a stage where we would manage the mind we would direct the mind where it has to go this is something which you have to do we are all aware of manas being two manas having two divisions manas having two divisions meaning the lower mind and the higher mind we are concerned with the higher manas in our sadhana the lower manas has to be cleansed. The lower manas has to be cleansed. So that there is only one manas, which is all higher manas. This is something which you have to attempt. So, this manas, which has two divisions, as we have said just now, the lower manas always <coughs> slides or is bending towards the karma, sharira, astral body. Astral body is full of desires. The lower mind slides towards that or is extending its hand towards the Kama Sarira or the astral body. One more hand of this is moving upstairs to the buddhic plane. So, the one which goes up is called the higher manas. The one which goes down is called the lower manas. We need to manage the lower mind. We need to cleanse the lower mind and completely eliminate the division which is there in the mind and we should become one. The mind should become one, which should be higher manas. So we move away from the astral, the lower mental, and try to reach the higher mental, the higher manas. This is the whole sadhana. The sadhana is all about how to take control of our astral body, our desires, how to drop desires, and how to cleanse our lower mental body and move towards the higher manas. This is the sadhana which we are asked to do. Higher manas 
as I said, is having the characteristic uniting everything. Higher mind has got the characteristic of uniting everything. Whereas the lower manas divides, distinguishes, separates, and that's the quality of the lower mind. So the, the, the sooner we get out of the lower mind, we move towards unity. We are trying to get united with the universal consciousness. Unless we realize unity within ourselves, we can't reach that unity which is in the universe. So this is what we are supposed to do. We have to consequently, through sadhana, move higher and embrace unity. We have to embrace unity. That's the sadhana which you have to do. What are the qualities one should have as sadhaka? Sadhaka is aspirant or person who is doing sadhana. What are the qualities you should have? All the scriptures, philosophies, all the religions, every religion is talking about this. There is no religion which doesn't say that how the person has to work to realize God or realize unity. So everybody, every religion, every philosophy is talking about this. How the mind has to develop these qualities is what is called perhaps the sadhana. What are the qualifications we should have? Shall we see the qualifications we should have? We all know this, but we're just recapitulating. What is the first quality which uh, a sadhaka should possess? It is said it is viveka or vichakshana, which has to be a part of the quality of the mind. The mind has to have this quality. Viveka or vichakshana. Viveka is the ability of the mind to distinguish between useful and not useful. What is temporary? What is permanent? What is something which gets destroyed? What is not getting destroyed? What is permanent? What is temporary? Viveka is the ability to choose a thing so intelligently so that the choice will help us to reach or enable us to reach the goal. So Viveka has to be part of our mind. So this Viveka, if it is not there, we will become a tool in the hands of the mind. So we have to become Viveka Vanta, means a one who is possessing Viveka. So this is something which you have to have. This is the first qualification, Viveka. And we have to do this choice very carefully. What is that which we can use? What is that we cannot use? This is something which we all need to have. This is a state of awareness. We are aware of everything. We are very carefully picking things which we want. We are dropping things which you don't want. So this is Viveka. All the chosen things should help us to reach the goal. This is what we said. And then the next quality of the mind, the sadhaka should have, is Vairagya. Detachment. Detachment. Detachment from unnecessary things. A state of, a state of desirelessness. As the book of the Master talks about. This is a state of Vairagya or unattachment. So this is what we are supposed to develop. The mind has to develop. Man is after all a bundle of desires. Desires don't die when we repeatedly satisfy the desire. They don't leave us when we have those desires or when we repeat those desires, when we repeat to enjoy those desires or have those desires. So more we satisfy, more that desire becomes part of our being. So it becomes stronger in us. It gets converted into a habit. And once it's a habit, life takes us away from the goal. So the, the sooner we realize the habits are things which would stop us in reaching the goal, we should be removing ourselves from forming these habits. And so we should practice this vairagya or inculcate this vairagya and we should move towards non-attachment. How do we get rid of desire? Desire is something which we are not able to leave that easily. This is part of sadhana. True understanding of the nature of desire, if I am thinking about the desire, for example, I feel like eating a masala vada every day in the evening. I am just saying, for example, I want to eat a masala vada, a plate of masala vada every evening. If I think about that particular habit of wanting to eat the masala vada, what exactly is happening at the time of eating, what it is, all that details if I get into, if I meditate on that, 
that will help me to understand the nature of desire why my mind is drawing always towards that masala vada so if i can understand if i contemplate if i meditate that will help me to eliminate the desire this is how desire has to be eliminated if you eliminate just like that if you think from tomorrow i will not have it will not it will not happen because the mind is stronger mind has to be told mind has to be educated that this particular thing which i am having is not worth having and mind has to realize that so i'll have to spend a lot of time with my mind to understand the nature of desire and then the desire should be transformed the desire should be transformed into will power ichha shakti desire should be transformed into will power the ichha shakti so a will to progress a will to achieve is something which i should have so the desire which was for material things like food or drink or whatever this is gone and i have got a replacement of that desire with will will to achieve will to progress progress in the right direction then the sadhaka should have or should develop good conduct this is what our book at the feet of the master says if somebody masters that at the feet of the master there is nothing more than that so that book talks about the good conduct this is the same thing which is talked in our scriptures as sat sampatti the six qualities which all sadhakas should have what are those six qualities in our scriptures sama shama shama rama titiksha uparati titiksha shraddha and samadhana so these are all the six qualities six components of good conduct self control as to the mind calmness of the mind removing all vasanas desires that is the self control of the mind self control in action that is taking control of the indriyas the sense organs which we have and tolerance uparati cessation of worldly longing that is uparati and cheerfulness titiksha whatever happens i am very cheerful whether it is something convenient whether something inconvenient something which suits me some something which doesn't suit me i'm very very comfortable with it i'm cheerful about it this is titiksha and then one pointedness like i have decided i have to achieve something which is intangible i'm working with it continuously and i have that one point agenda that's shraddha that is the thing which i should have and then i have confidence i have samadhana or the ability to concentrate my mind fixing the mind on the goal and this is what i'm supposed to do this is all part of the good conduct all these qualities which are part of sadhaka will help him to reach the goal of perfection and on reaching perfection he will reach a stage of bliss ananda he will become part of the universal self and that will be ananda and cheerfulness all around so he will be come a channel he will become a channel to spread love kindness and other universal forces which are divine he becomes realized he becomes realized and he practices due attachment he has love for everybody he has kindness for everybody but he is not attached to anybody he practices due attachment so this is something which we should try as a sadhaka and during sadhana one may experience a lot of difficulties it's not an easy path the sadhana is not an easy path it's a steep path it's very difficult to achieve your goals but yes the person with determination will move forward to reach the goal of perfection so there are certain rules which hvb talked about for all the disciples and what what does she say sadhaka should lead a clean life what is clean life both antar bahya saucha not just taking bath that's not being really pure the life has to be pure right thinking right action right food everything about it is right that clean life is something which sadhaka should have and then she talks about sadhaka should be unselfish this is something which is very very important if has to become perfect sadhaka should be unselfish he should work for the welfare of others 
he should be a source of happiness for others and he should derive joy in serving others so this is something which has to happen which has to change this is the paradigm shift which you talked about normally we think more about ourselves what we have to think in terms of others others welfare others joy to serve others so this is the paradigm shift we talked about in the beginning and sadhaka should study 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 is important because study will lead him to the right kind of knowledge knowledge when we contemplate on the knowledge it becomes wisdom so this is what our shastras talk about shravana manana and nididhyasa this is what our sciences or our shastras talk about this should become part of our life and sadhaka has to be humble this is what madam says he has to be humble because i have knowledge because i have realized i have no right to misbehave i have to be humble knowledgeable all right but the knowledge is not to show off but the knowledge is not for recognition not for name and fame but the knowledge of wisdom to help others that's the knowledge you should have knowledge sadhaka should become very humble and sadhaka should stick to the path of dharma and righteousness so nothing unruly should happen with him and nothing which is not required should be part of his life everything should be dharmic righteous this is something which sadhaka should do and sadhaka has to be truthful and sincere the value one has for truth and sincerity is something paramount in a disciple this is something which madam blavatsky talks about sadhaka should not use the occult powers for his selfish needs in the process of his study in the process of his exercise of his meditation and things like that he may get some powers those occult powers those secret powers are not to be misused they are to be used for the welfare of others sadhaka doesn't believe in acquiring things because he has left that path he is not going out he is traveling within himself so sadhaka doesn't believe in acquiring things he moves away from the material possessions he has no longing for that he has no desire for getting any more assets sadhaka has to develop the art of meditation jhana he has to meditate a lot concentration through meditation he can cleanse his lower vehicles how it helps you the spending of the time with the physical body cleansing the physical body then moving to the etheric double cleansing that move etheric double then perhaps moving to the astral body cleansing the astral body so that no desires form part of that body and then go to the lower mental body cleansing that so that no emotions are part of that lower mental body so cleansing has to take place here when we are living here when we are living here we are supposed to take care of how to cleanse our bodies so after death the time we spend in astral plane then will be minimal the time we spend in lower mental will be minimal so to enable us to do that we have to do this of cleansing of our physical etheric double astral and lower mental this cleansing has to take place if you go into the details it's a big lesson by itself so we'll consider that some other time so sadhaka has no longer an appetite for vices vices he has no he has completely removed them no longer he is attracted to vices and throws him them out so he has no vices he only has virtues sadhaka has to eat to live even for food he should not have greed for food or appetite for food he will only eat to live and not live to eat this is very important he will consider eating only sattvic food so he gets sattvic thoughts so that's the type of food he should have and sattvic should be a person having love for everyone in his heart god loves everybody so this person who is trying to reach that goal of unity with the universal self will also have love in his heart he has tremendous amount of love love not only with people who are with me love for those who are not with me some people who are differing from me i love that person also i don't mind how he behaves but i will behave with lot of love this is something 
which your sadhaka should have. Master or guru who wants to guide him will examine the candidate whether this person is selfish or this person is unselfish. So he also looks for harmonious persons. He will look for that sort of an attitude in his behavior with others. So sadhaka, he has to decide. He cannot travel in two boats. If I call myself sadhaka, either I travel in the spiritual boat or if I want, I will travel in the material boat. I can't have a foot in the material and another foot in the spiritual boat. So if somebody is like that, that means time is not ripe enough for him to do sadhana. So that's something which we have to clearly decide whether I want material life, whether I want spiritual life. Those who want spiritual life will have to leave and come into this world of spiritual life. There are no half measures, they say, in spiritual life. Half-hearted attempts are not there. We have to be completely, we plunge into the activity completely. That's how we become persons who are sadhakas. So sadhaka should speak little. Sadhaka should speak little. Speak only when necessary. Should spend more time in meditation and contemplation. Sadhaka should drop emotions like greed, anger, desire, holding, jealousy. This is something like in Sanskrit we say kama, krodha, lobha, moha, madha, matsariya. So greed, anger, desire, holding, jealousy. And replace them with virtues like dana, that is donating, shama, that is patience or tolerance or forgiving, and shanta, peace, equanimity, and vairagya, that is not getting attached to anything. Love is something which you will have in his heart for everyone and everything. As we have seen, man is a bundle of desires and weaknesses are there. So pure, godly, real man is living in all of us. Pure, godly, real man is living in all of us. Man has to tap that person and bring him out. And that is finding the real purpose of life. The godliness in man, I have to find out. I have to leave out all that is which is showing animal propensities in me. If the animal propensities in me disappear, if godly qualities appear, that is moving towards the goal. So man has limitations of space and time, whereas divinity has no such limitations. So the goals which we have chosen are very sublime, very high, very pure in nature. We have to put efforts with sincerity and taking into stride the difficulties which appear in our lives. So, en route, we may have a lot of difficulties, but unless we are determined, we will not be able to reach the goal. Sadhaka has to work, aspirant has to work assiduously, continuously, and put mind over matter to achieve the goals. This is very important. And we'll have to spend by moving from the lower vehicles, reach the higher manas, make otherwise the manas into one. The lower manas is disappearing, only higher manas. If we spend our time in the higher manas, the chances that the doors of the buddhi claim will open are there. And buddhi being the vehicle of atma, if we reach the buddhi plane, we also realize what is atma. So this is the process of our journey. And sadhaka has to cooperate with the laws of nature which are there. And the feeding, the feeding of the self, the selfish nature, this is the most important thing. The feeding of the self and the self should disappear. That should end. That should stop. Me and mine as mine, they should disappear. Sadhaka has to reflect self-introspect. So this is something as a tool which people prescribe. Self-introspection, as if someone is looking at me. I introspect. I see from the time I got up in the morning till the time I retired to bed, what exactly happened? Where all my selfishness was there? Where all I was rude? Where all I was not loving? If I examine myself thoroughly, Selya Pariksha, there is one term in Sanskrit. Selya Pariksha means threadbare. Look at myself as if somebody is criticizing me, somebody is looking at me. If I know that self-introspection, if I practice the self-introspection, if I eliminate self in all my ways, and that would lead me to the path, the inner path, and that inner path would lead me to the ultimate perfection. This is the sadhana. This is the road to perfection. Road to perfection is merging my consciousness to the universal consciousness. 
and impurity cannot get merged in purity. So I am personally impure now because I am selfish. The selfishness has to go, hatred has to go, greed has to go, and then I become pure in my thought, in my action, in my behavior, and this unit will then then get merged into the universal consciousness. This is perhaps the sadhana. Thank you, Mathurji. This is what I have to convey in English. Thank you. Very, very inspiring, illuminative talk. And you have shown the paradigm shift that is must from uh, me to us. What you have told is a very important thing that we have to do. And you have told us that you have given the golden example of the At the feet of the master, maybe this is a thing. जो कि बार-बार कही गई है कि दो तरीके के लोग हैं एक जो जानते हैं और एक नहीं जानते यहीं पे डिफरेंस है थैंक यू ब्रदर यू हैव वेरी एबली एक्सप्लेन्ड वेरी इल्यूमिनेटेड एंड डिस्क्राइब्ड रियली इन वेरी इजी वर्ड्स द वेरी वेरी डीप सब्जेक्ट एंड द पर्पस ऑफ लाइफ एंड साधना नाउ आई विल इनवाइट्स इफ समबदर want to uh, add something or he wants to question he has got in his mind so please yeah. brother yes any yes brother, any brother who wants to talk but i guess he could push push now yeah Mathur sahab, everything is very, very clear. It is very lucid. It is very nice. And it is as per theosophical literature. And he has not gone outside the theosophy. And that is a, I think we should praise him. After all, he is a national lecturer. So he is very, thank, thanks, lot of thanks to him. If you have any other question in mind, or if you have to add something, then tell us. हम लोग फिर इसको समाप्ति की तरफ लेके जाएं अगर किसी के माइंड में कोई भी क्वेश्चन है तो बताएं या कुछ ऐड करना है नहीं है कोई क्वेश्चन हेलो 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 when when we address when we address general public the approach will be different this is a theosophical group that's why a lot of theosophical terms have been used Very if we are talking to the general public the approach is different so this is yeah. just a submission because i knew this was theosophical i i uh, used more of theosophical terminology <coughs> हेलो राजीव और कुछ हम लोगों ने कहना है नहीं तो फिर अब हम इसको क्लोज करते हैं और ये हम इस साल की हम लोगों की लास्ट मीटिंग है क्योंकि 26 तारीख है आज और नेक्स्ट हमारा सेकंड जनवरी को होगा 2021 तो लेट्स विश सबके लिए बहुत अच्छा सब लोग को अंदर से इनर लाइट मिले यही हम सब के लिए कामना करेंगे और हमारा नेक्स्ट टॉपिक होगा 2 जनवरी 2021 को और टॉपिक होगा प्रारब्ध एवं पुरुषार्थ ब्रदर एस के पांडे जी लेंगे जो हमारे नेशनल लेक्चरार हैं वो इस टॉप को लेंगे प्रारब्ध एवं पुरुषार्थ तो 2 जनवरी 2021 को हम लोग दोबारा से इसमें आगे वो करेंगे और ये 2020 समाप्त हो जाएगा तो अभी इसको कहना मैं प्रेयर कर लेते हैं सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिना संतु सर्वेस धन्तु निरामया 
सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित दुख भाग भवेत् ओम शांति शांति